The REIT market is vast and versatile and there's truly something for everyone. Some REITs are better suited for income-oriented investors, a good example of that would be Realty Income. Then some other REITs will be better suited for growth-oriented investors and here Prologis comes to my mind. Finally, some REITs are highly speculative and only intended for deep value investors who are seeking to maximize their upside. Here a good example of that will be Medical Properties Trust. But there are some exceptions that could make sense for most investors' portfolios. I'm here referring to a handful of REITs that really check all the boxes. They enjoy resilient fundamentals, they have attractive growth prospects, they offer good value for money, they pay a high dividend yield, and finally they offer some upside to top it all off. Put simply, these exceptional REITs offer a path to above average returns with below average risk, and that's exactly what I'm seeking as an active investor. Hey everyone, this is Yussi, I'm a CFA charter holder but not a financial advisor so please make sure to do your own due diligence. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing and in today's video I want to talk to you about two REITs that I think most investors should consider for their portfolios. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and like this video, it will really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support. So the first read I want to discuss here is called Big Yellow Group and this is my favorite self-storage investment. Its ticker symbol in the US is BYLOF and its ticker symbol in the UK is BYG. American self-storage REITs have been incredibly rewarding over the past decades as they've generated nearly 20% average annual total returns over the past 28 years. They were so exceptionally rewarding because they were able to earn significant spreads of their cost of capital by developing new properties and acquiring existing ones from unsophisticated operators and then improving their cash flows thanks to economies of scale, national advertising campaigns, revenue optimization systems and better branding. But now the US self-storage market has become very competitive, new properties have been built at every busy intersection and therefore the opportunity is now gone. However, the European self-storage market is still 20 years behind and I think that Big Yellow Group is ideally positioned to replicate the successful model in Europe. Today there is still 10 times less storage space per capita in the UK when compared to the US, but the same demand drivers also exist in Europe and the concept is now rapidly growing in popularity. Big Yellow Group was an early mover into this market, it IPO'd over 20 years ago and it is today the leader in the self-storage market in the UK. And its early results have been quite phenomenal, it's been able to compound investors' capital at roughly 16% per year over the past 20 plus years and that's despite suffering a major setback during the great financial crisis because it was over leveraged at that time. But the important thing here is that I think that the Big Yellow Group is still just getting started and can keep this going for another few decades. Today its market cap is still just two and a half billion dollars which is about 20 times smaller than the leaders in the US which are public storage and extra space storage. Therefore whenever Big Yellow Group is offered at a discount I just buy more shares. I made my first purchase in 2016 after the Brexit crash when Big Yellow Group was offered at about 650 British pence per share. I then saw it rise all the way to 1700 British pence per share and now following the recent dip it's right back at around 1000 British pence. At this current share price I estimate that it is valued at about a 25% discount to its net asset value which is a historically low valuation for the company and it also offers a roughly 5% dividend yield. It's not the cheapest rate in the market but it offers a clear path to above average returns with below average risk and that is why it's an anchor in my REIT portfolio. A simple rule of thumb that I've used in the past is to buy more shares whenever it's offered at a dividend yield in excess of 4% and today we are closer to 5% and therefore I give it a strong buy rating. And then the second read I want to discuss here is Essential Properties Realty Trust which is my biggest net lease rate investment, its ticker symbol is EPRT. Net lease properties are some of my favorite real estate investments and they make up a large percentage of my REIT portfolio. In case you're not familiar with net lease properties, these are typically freestanding single tenant service oriented properties such as CVS pharmacies, Dollar General grocery stores or even Chevron gas stations. What makes these properties so attractive is the way their leases are structured in a way to be very favorable to the landlord to generate highly resilient and predictable cash flow. Typically the lease term is really long at over 10 years. Typically the lease term also includes preset automatic rent hikes that are contractual and then finally typically the tenant is also responsible for all property expenses including even the maintenance of the property and therefore the cash flow is highly consistent and predictable. 
Moreover, because these properties are the profit center of their tenants, they are very unlikely to ever want to move out as long as they can turn a profit. And since the rent coverage ratios of these properties are typically at around three times, there is significant margin of safety, even in case of a recession. Because of all of this, during my private equity days, we would commonly say that net lease properties offer equity-like returns with bond-like risk. But just don't take my word for it. Here you can look at the track record of Realty Income, which is the biggest net lease REIT. And you'll see that since going public in 1994, it's been able to generate 15% average annual total returns, all while growing its dividend for nearly 30 years in a row, even despite the dot-com crash, the great financial crisis, as well as the pandemic. The pandemic was arguably the worst possible crisis for a net lease REIT, given that most of these properties had to be closed down, but not even that could stop their cash flow. Well, Essential Properties Realty Trust takes the same approach and it puts it on steroids. Instead of targeting net lease properties that are occupied by big name tenants like CBS Pharmacies or Dollar General, Essential Properties Realty Trust tends to go after properties that are occupied by smaller and lesser known middle market tenants. The reason why it does this is because there's far less competition for these assets and it allows the REIT to structure even stronger leases to target even higher returns. Typically, we'll get materially higher cap rates, better lease escalations, no landlord responsibilities, it will also get access to the tenant's financials and other benefits. The risks of these properties are of course a bit higher, but the difference really isn't that significant. That's because what really matters in a net lease property is the unit level profitability of the property and in the case of Essential Properties Realty Trust, the rent coverage ratios of its assets are comparable to those of other net lease REITs. Moreover, because it enjoys better bargaining power with its tenants, Essential Properties Realty Trust is typically able to get corporate guarantees, master leases, as well as access to the tenant's financials to mitigate risks. And then finally, the REIT takes these properties, mixes them in a well-diversified portfolio, and as such, the risks of individual assets are well-diversified. In the end, Essential Properties Trust ends up earning above average returns without taking significant incremental risks. The proof here is really how it performed during the pandemic. Essential Properties Trust was able to keep on earning steady cash flow, it kept on growing, it kept on paying its dividend, and as a result, since going public, it has earned far higher total returns than its peers like Realty Income. And importantly, I think that the REIT can keep this outperformance going for a long time because today it's still far smaller than its peers like Realty Income. Its size is about eight to nine times smaller. It also has less leverage, better access to liquidity, and still able to buy properties at a nice spread over its cost of capital even following the recent crash. This year it has guided to grow its FFO per share by 7.4%, which is by far the highest growth rate in the Netlist Pure Group, and it has guided for this steady growth to continue in 2024 and 2025 because it's not materially impacted by the surge in interest rates. Despite that, it's today still offered at a small discount relative to its Pure Group, trading at just 12 times FFO and offering a 5% dividend yield. Here you can do very simple math. If you earn a 5% dividend yield, you add 7% of growth to that, you earn a 12% average annual total return, and that's without including any repricing upside. But eventually, I think that it's likely that as the market learns more about Essential Properties Realty Trust, it will price at a premium relative to its peer group, and if it sees its multiple expand just to 16 times FFO, that would add another 20 to 30% of repricing upside. If you expect that to be realized over the next 3 to 5 years, that would result in roughly 15 to 20% average annual total returns. So once more here you have a clear path to above average returns with below average risk, and this is why we like this read so much. So the whole point of this video was to show you that there are some exceptional REITs that really stand out from the rest. Big Yellow Group and Essential Properties Realty Trust are two good examples of that, but despite that they are getting very little attention from most investors who tend to focus on larger REITs like Realty Income. The secret to my success as an active REIT investor has been to invest heavily in these smaller and lesser known REITs that have better economics and yet trade at lower valuations than the average of the REIT sector. Now, if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, as well as all my transactions in real time, feel free to join my REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord, for two-week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. And otherwise, once more, could you please like this video? That really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.